Okay, friends, I just hit over 7,600 subscribers and I've been monetized for over six months now. So I thought I'd share with you how much I earned during that time because we're all a little curious. So currently I am at 7,615 subscribers. And yeah, I got monetized in April of 2024 of this year. Also, those are fixed. So I'll break down the AdSense income month by month, how much I made, highest paying day, lowest paying day, amount of subscribers I've gained, watch hours, things like that. All things I was super curious about when I first started making videos for YouTube. A lot of the videos I was looking for when I started this goal of being monetized, there's so many videos where these creators are so popular and making so much money already that it felt almost unattainable and it felt so out of reach and sets your expectations up so high when you see these huge numbers which isn't the best. Especially if you're nowhere near that, it could feel a little bit discouraging to see such a big difference between these successful YouTubers and where you're at. So I do like seeing videos from smaller creators about topics like this. So you can kind of set realistic expectations and see what you could possibly achieve within a year or two. Not everybody has infinite resources and all this money in a production team. I make all my videos myself, I edit them myself, and I wanted to see if this was something I could actually do and make money off of. So that's why I started this monetization journey. My growth is pretty slow. So if you're feeling stuck or unmotivated, I totally get it. But hopefully after showing you some of my analytics, it makes you feel like you're not alone and it gives you some kind of inspiration or encouragement to keep going even when you feel like it's so far away. Before we get to the numbers, I feel like I should explain how I got to the point of getting monetized because that was such a big goal for so long last year. I uploaded my first video, I think in like 2019, and it was not good. It was just a shaky GoPro video of me skateboarding in Kobe. And I uploaded random art time-lapse videos, a few more other travel videos that were just poor quality. Not really understanding YouTube, but I think I started seeing the potential of it when I started meeting people who were in this space. So I decided I was gonna go into YouTube and just commit just try it out and see so my first real attempt for like a long form video was uploaded on may 4th of 2023 and it was hiking with my dog and like talking about a tripod that i got it was not great but i figured if i wanted to learn something i just have to do the things you know what i mean so uh, yeah i uploaded that and i got like 20 views and it was I don't like to watch it. I was proud of it at the time, but looking back, like, it's not the best. So yeah, that video was uploaded May of 2023. I didn't get monetized until April of 2024. So that's pretty much a year. And I figured it would take about a year if I was putting in some serious effort. I was not expecting anything to go viral and get monetized right away like some creators do. Um, so yeah, I'd give myself a year to really try it out and upload videos and learn as much as I can and to see if I could hit that goal. It does feel like a pretty long year because you're putting in so much time and effort into something that's really I mean you're not really getting much in return you are learning a lot of things I think there's a lot of benefits in YouTube where you learn video editing skills and making thumbnails and you can freelance those kind of jobs it's fun having like a video journal of you know the places you've been or where you were at in your life at that time yeah self critique can be pretty rough the burnout is real Okay, so I did want to mention though that if you do decide to commit to this YouTube monetization journey uh, of getting those watch hours and views and subscribers, make sure you have someone to talk to about the feelings you're going to be feeling when you're doing these things because these seemingly trivial things like view counts and comments and watch hours that shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things really begin to matter when you are trying to achieve this goal. And it's so easy to to be so self-critical of your videos and to take things personally when your videos aren't doing well and you can get really caught up in all that stuff and just be really negative. I think it's because you're putting a part of yourself out there in the world and when that doesn't do well it feels like a reflection of you. So yeah you can see how easily this can start messing with your head. So if you do have supportive people in your life that's great and lean into that but if you don't I've tried BetterHelp which is the sponsor of today's video and their mission is to make 
make starting therapy easier. Social media doesn't always have the best reputation. I think some of those issues and concerns that you may be having around social media might get dismissed by a lot of people because it's not real. But I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of restructure my negative thoughts I was having or to keep myself grounded while I was working towards the school. I think therapy can be really expensive really quickly and kind of hard to access depending on your situation. So that's why I chose BetterHelp. If you do have the time to reach out, I would definitely do it because just having someone outside of your circle to listen to your thoughts and offer you a new perspective. It does wonders for your resilience and your ability to grow as a person and, you know, pick yourself back up when things aren't going well. And that's just a life skill that you're going to learn regardless of what you're trying. So last note about mental health before we get back into the numbers is you don't have to feel so pressured to pretend everything is okay all of the time. I don't know if you've seen the world lately, but it's pretty crazy. I think a lot of us are struggling. We just don't talk about it in the YouTube world or just mental health, anything in general, and you want to seek out some help. You can click the link in the description and it'll give you 10% off your first month. So it gives you that time to really find a therapist that you really like. So the link if you don't see it below is betterhelp.com slash jessica miyuki and the cool thing about BetterHelp is that you can sign up and be speaking with a therapist from the comfort of your own home in as little as a few days. There's help out there and yeah the sun will shine. <laughs> That's that. Back to the numbers. Um okay so so to be monetized you need 4,000 watch hours and a thousand subscribers which felt like a lot. It was a lot, especially if you're starting from nothing. But that was my goal for the first real attempt at YouTube. After my first month of uploading videos, I got 26 subscribers and 34.4 watch hours. I needed 4,000. 4,000. I was at 34. So yeah, safe to say I was a little bit discouraged. And to be honest, most of the year looked like that. It wasn't some crazy growth. It did speed up and get steadier closer to when I got monetized in April. But for most of the year, I was just uploading as many videos as I could, taking content from my Japan trips and really practicing editing videos and making good quality long form content. And yeah, I, I wanted it to be an art channel, but all of the footage I had was of traveling. So it kind of became like a travel channel at one point. Point, I was editing a full 10 to 15 minute video every week and posting my Instagram reels and stories and making them into shorts and it was a lot so I definitely got burnt out. Keep a steady pace but don't burn yourself out. But because my strategy was to focus more on 10 minute plus videos I did get to the 4,000 watch hours quicker than I don't know I wouldn't say average but I have seen a lot of posts on Reddit saying that they're struggling with watch hours and it's sounds like a lot of them post like two to three minute videos. So I would recommend longer ones if you can do it. And I remember it being so much work at the time, but it got me into a rhythm of making videos and it made me more efficient at editing videos. So when I wanted to create another video after my little burnout break, it didn't seem so daunting or tedious. Yeah, it worked out in the end. I was also pretty engaged with the community that I was building. I wanted to respond to all the comments in the language that they wrote it in. Yeah, it's fun. I think the support from you YouTube is different from other social media platforms. People seem to be a lot nicer on YouTube and genuinely supportive, which is nice. I feel like on Instagram, people just kind of lurk, keep tabs on other people. and They don't engage with your content, but YouTube people seem like they're excited to see your new videos, which is really satisfying. But the tipping point of getting to that 4,000, 1,000 goal, I uploaded a, a shorts of me making waffles for my dog and it blew up. And I got like 10,000 views in a day and 30 subscribers. So that pushed me into the monetization world. I'm gonna walk you through the official breakdown of April through September from being monetized on YouTube. And I'm not including sponsored or branded videos. That's a totally different thing. This is just from AdSense. Let me pull up my laptop. Okay, in April when I started, I got 45.5 thousand views, 2.5 thousand watch hours, 314 subscribers, and my lowest earning day was $2.34, and my highest paid day was $7.77 for a whopping grand total of $20.91 for that month. But 
I did get monetized on April 27th, so it wasn't that much time, but I did completely mess up. Since I have other businesses, I thought I could just wrap up all of my Google AdSense into one thing. I was wrong. I'm a sole proprietor and I put business and <sighs> Long story short, it messed up a lot of things and I couldn't get my money. So the $20.91 is um, lost in cyberspace. But yeah, in April, my most watched video was my Mallorca video and it got 22,000 views, which is crazy because for the whole year before that, I couldn't get more than like 200 views on anything. Okay, so May, I got 91.2 thousand views. Why did I say it like that? I got 91.2 thousand views, 6.9 thousand watch hours, 1.3 thousand subscribers, which like I said, the whole year before, couldn't get to 4,000 watch hours, couldn't get to 1,000 subscribers, and in one month I blow it out of the water. Anyways, lowest paid day was 19 cents, and my highest earning day was $25 and nine cents and the reason why it was so low is because when I messed up the AdSense sole proprietor business thing it locked me out of my account kind of and I had to email the YouTube people and the Google AdSense people and it was a whole thing and basically I couldn't get monetized for like a week or so in May when my videos were blowing up comparatively to my other ones so that was a bit disappointing but you know what we're still here. So yeah, in May, my Mallorca video got 49,000 views and my Fukuoka video got 30,000 views and that one took off really quickly. Maybe because it was like summer? Summer travel? I'm not really sure. So June, I got 81.5 thousand views, 6,000 watch hours, 915 new subscribers, lowest paid day was $8.66 and highest paid day was $17.34. I totally forgot to do the grand total. So the grand total for May was $326.42, which is very satisfying. It's not a lot of money, but for starting from zero, it felt great. But for June, the grand total for June was $370.72, which I felt like I'm doing things, you know, like it was up from the last month, feeling good about it. And in June, my Fukuoka video got 35,000 views and my Mallorca video got 31,000 views. So those two videos are doing very, very well which made up for the bulk of my income from AdSense for that month. July was a great month. Also, maybe summer people are on YouTube more. I'm not really sure. But in July, I got 137.6 thousand views, 8.1 thousand watch hours, 2.1 thousand new subscribers, Lowest paid day, $7.80. Highest paid day was $31.59. And the grand total for that month was $490.74, which felt great. I was like, this is it. I can totally do this. The trajectory is amazing. I'm gonna make all this money. I just got excited. That month I posted like a surfing video, surf with me video that got 56,000 views very quickly. A Fukuoka video got 28,000. Mallorca video got 24,000. And I was noticing noticing that my videos that had like turquoise oceany thumbnails were doing pretty well. So I wanted to make more like surfy snorkely videos. My other surf videos kind of flopped, but a lot of the other videos during July got at least two to 4,000 views. So it really helped. So people were just enjoying the internet in July, I guess. August, I got 116,000 views, 7.2 thousand watch hours, 1.5 thousand new subscribers. Lowest paid day was 10 dollars and nine cents highest paid day was nineteen dollars and thirty six cents for a grand total of four hundred thirty dollars and twelve cents so not as much as july the month before but still enough to feel like this is going somewhere and i could be happy about it in august the surf with me video that did so well the month before still got thirty thousand views fukuoka video got twenty six thousand views my mallorca video also got twenty six thousand views i made a surf with us video to kind of piggyback off of the surf with me video that got 7,000 views and a lot of the other videos were still getting two to 4,000 views that month. So it was very consistent. But in September, context clues, when I say but, it wasn't as good. I had a lot of other things going on at the time. So I really didn't put in as much effort and I feel like YouTube sensed that or people went back to school. I don't know. In September, I got 56.9 thousand views, 3.6 thousand watch hours, 571 new subscribers. Lowest earning day was $5.30 and the highest earning day was $14.31 for a grand total of $256.04. So quite a bit lower but at that point I was I think I ended at 
7,471 subscribers. So the 10K subscriber thing felt very attainable. So I'm back on it. I'm motivated again, you guys. It's October. I have video ideas, I have footage. It's happening. The Serve With Me video got 14,000 views. Fukuoka got 13,000. Mallorca got just below 10,000 views. I uploaded a snorkel video that got 4,000 views and the rest were all below 2,000 views. So the viewership really did decline. And that's kind of how the first six months of being monetized went. It wasn't a linear growth by any means. It felt like it should have been, but I think I pulled back and the viewership also coincidentally went lower. You get out what you put into it to a degree. You can't always predict AdSense though, because the craziest part is that 100,000 views for one channel can be $300 or $500 and for another channel it could only be $100. It just depends on their niche and their CPM and RPM and all the stuff that you can Google. It's a lot. It is somewhat out of your control. So for the grand total of those six months of being monetized, was $1,894.95. So like for six months, it's not much, but from starting from zero, it felt really good. It just meant that, you know, I could afford fancier groceries, get my smoked salmon, get a GoPro, book a flight, fun things, fun money, you know, but not enough to live off of by any means, from AdSense at least. So yeah, I'm not a full-time creator. I do still create, you know, videos and reels and posts and whatnot for brands on Instagram. And I also enjoy the other careers that I have because I still make designs for surf companies and freelance and have my art and galleries and I like having all of those things so I think I would enjoy making enough money to go be a creator full-time but I also like the freedom that I have with like being able to travel and go surf and make art and do all the things that fulfill me creatively but yeah again this is all from AdSense when you hear other youtubers saying that a bulk of their income is from sponsorships and branded content believe them because that is where the money is at and you can negotiate those rates and it's more predictable. AdSense can really go up and down depending on seasons or there's a lot of factors that go into it. But yeah, if you were looking to start a YouTube channel or just wanted to browse for inspiration, if you're feeling kind of stuck or you just wanted to be nosy and find out how much I made on YouTube, I hope this video was satisfying and helpful for you. Don't give up if you enjoy it. You never really know when a video is going to pop off. Like the waffle one. It's so random. Them. To all my other creators out there, I'm wishing you the best and I hope to see you just crushing it out there. My next goal for YouTube, besides 10,000 subscribers, is 100,000 because I want that plaque so bad. I think just because it's a plaque I want it, that's not healthy. But you know what? Sometimes we can have lofty goals. I'll allow myself that lofty goal. If you've followed along so far, thank you so much for watching. Your support means so much to me. And yeah, I'll see you in whatever video you decide to click on next. Next, I'm going to a tropical island in a week. So uh, that video will be hopefully edited not too far from now. But yeah, I will see you there, wherever that may be. Bye guys.